Hello and welcome to Offsides. My name is Matt Ufford. The man beside me today is Fred Dreyer, TV's Hunter, but more importantly, uh, uh, NFL All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler, uh, the only man to record two safeties in a game. An honor. I am, I am, I, I'm so stoked to have you here, sir. Thank you very much, Matt. You may call me Sultan of Safeties. Sultan of Safeties? <laughs> I, I will, sir. Um, I want to express my, uh, my happiness in, in words to have you here. We've had John Elway on the show, uh, all pro players like Von Miller. Right. Not a big deal. I am legitimately psyched to have you here today. Well, you're very kind. Thank you. I, I enjoy being here. Um, also, while we run through your list of accolades, uh, College Football Hall of Fame. Of course, uh, three years with the Giants. Three. Three years that with the Giants. That was enough. That was enough. Before moving uh, to your native state of California, where you finished your career and played most of the uh, 70s with the Rams. I played 69 to 71 here in New York and then 72 to 81 in L.A. Uh, I appreciate you being here in New York City. I, I understand that you're not a fan of New York. Well, I, I, I do like New York, actually. I, I, was, uh, I was a little... Uh, Heart sore because I had to leave because of, of, of the work conditions here. You really? Know? Yeah. I, uh, you know, the team was bad, and I could see that I wasn't going to make it through my youth if I stayed here. I, uh, <laughs> was it just too much nightlife, or, or no, what was... No, not enough, actually. Not enough. And uh, uh, too much uh, of uh, mayhem on Sunday, losing... Uh, it, it looked like there was more losing ahead, so uh, I made a career choice and uh, got out of here and took a shot uh, uh, back in L.A., and, uh, and we uh, did pretty well back there. Made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, I want to let you know that I'm a big fan of, uh, of NFL films, uh, which you've currently got a little bit of a beef with, right. understandably. But um, I, the, I think it was the summer that you left New York for L.A., uh, there's video of you talking about uh, your happiness at leaving New York City. I think we've actually got a clip if you want to look at the monitor there. Oh, the vertical, horizontal? Thing? Yes. Yeah. New York bugged me because everything is vertical in New York. L.A. is horizontal. I'm a horizontal person. Why New York? I mean, why would a person want to be in New York? I'd be in New York City, and I was constantly looking around. People thought I was looking for cabs. I'm looking for open spaces. You know, it's like walking in a maze of Monopoly set. You know, you're always running the park place. I mean, you walk around the city watching these big machines going boom, ba. Wild noisy machine. All right. Uh, that, that went on a little bit just because I... I 1972. I, it, uh, it looked like it. That Palm van, Springs. That, uh, you, that van was amazing. Is that actually your, your primary That's, vehicle? That was my, that was my uh, actual uh, vehicle. And... Uh, uh, we had a lot of fun there. Was there? Uh, looked like. What did you? What did you keep in the van? What did you like? It, it looked like it was something. Well, that I had. You I had. I, I, I did live on it as I drove around. I. That's where I stayed. That's incredible. So in the summer of 1972, or, or earlier, I guess probably the spring. Yeah. Was when when did you um, move out to Los Angeles from New York? I, I left uh, uh, January of uh, 72. And that seems unthinkable to me. That. Uh, Excuse uh, me, January of '73. Of course. Actually. So it it seems unusual to me that uh, that a pro football player would just uh, road trip across America driving shirtless. Uh, not not that I'm complaining because you look amazing. Well, when I when I was uh, shirtless there, I was out in the California desert, which uh, that's where you should be shirtless. That van does not look like it has air conditioning. It doesn't. It had uh, open windows and it had uh, a vent on top and. Uh, you, the faster you went, the cooler you were. Oh, man, I actually used to live out in the California desert, and uh, oh. when I first moved there, I was shocked because uh, you know, always growing up in in uh, climates where there's a little bit of humidity, uh, you roll down the window and you get a cool breeze because right. you're driving. And uh, in the Mojave Desert, you roll down the window and it's like having a blow dryer yeah. come in there. Yeah, that's right. But uh, but I just want to say that uh, I really appreciate uh, NFL Films for, for putting that clip together. How did you have an NFL Films crew with I you? I didn't get paid for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's I feel like that's a great segue because uh -huh. uh, you're here in town uh, to talk about the the lawsuit that you're a part of against the NFL. And um while we talk about legal matters, I, I don't have a very good legal mind, so I'm going to put on my glasses. 
uh, because it well, makes you're, me, half, you're halfway there. Then it makes me look like I understand what's going exactly on. Exactly right. Uh, so I know that the the lawsuit was was filed in 2009. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's it's kind of been a long thing coming. Uh, the NFL reached a settlement with uh, uh, announcing a common good trust for 42 million dollars for retired players. But uh, backing it up a little bit, can you tell me just the uh, the gist of the lawsuit? Listen, uh, the NFL has been using the uh, likes and the, and the personal uh, rights of uh, people's identities for uh, many, many decades. Uh, they haven't reimbursed anybody for it. Uh, every player that has been under contract who is now not under contract continues to be in service to the National Football League without being paid directly any money whatsoever. This agreement, this lawsuit, was to rectify that to address that, and uh, uh, it was filed, it's a, and uh, it's, we come up with a 58-page document that is virtually worthless. It is a, uh, it is a disgrace, actually, to uh, have to ask people to not only read it, but to uh, actually uh, accept it and to sign off on it. Uh, I represent uh, six uh, original plaintiffs, myself, uh, Joe Sensor, uh, Ed White, um, uh, Dan Pastorini, um, uh, Elvin Bethay, uh, myself, uh, all of us um, are against this. All of us are uh, vehemently against it, uh, and, and we re we highly uh, recommend that the, uh, the the body, the group, the class uh, action group that we represent, uh, take a real hard look at this and make a decision for themselves whether to uh, object or and uh, opt out. I myself am opting out of it. And when you say uh, a class action suit, you're talking about 200,000 former former NFL players. Correct? Well, it's about it's about 20,000. 20,000, ah, just in a magnitude 200, of 10. 200,000. That's yes. an awful lot. That's uh, that's way that's way more than I thought they were. They were <laughs> I'll take. I'm going to take your word for this. Uh, on yeah, it's about 20,000, and uh, uh, the heart and core of it's probably eight eight to ten thousand. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fringe guys that play one year, two years, or maybe not vested. And, you know, they played that four or five games here and there, but. Uh, for the most part, you're looking at uh, a lot of uh, ex-players who, who have not been paid one cent for the use of their likenesses uh, to celebrate and promote an, a $10 billion industry globally. As a layman, when it comes to, to legal matters, it's I see a lot of uh, parallels uh, to the NCA suit, uh, the, the NCAA suit that's going on with Ed O'Bannon and uh, uh -huh. players suing, in that uh, there's this... Uh, vast uh, vehicle for uh, wealth creation in which the uh, the people responsible for creating that wealth are getting uh, zero dollars from it. Right. Uh, do you see uh, parallels between that? Are, are the two? That's a good analogy, sure. The, the O'Banion case is very important to us. Uh, any type of individual personal rights case is, is, is interesting to us. Uh, you know, sports franchises, you know, as I said a, a while ago, that, uh, you know, you're under contract for them for any specific amount of time. You know, college basketball players are there for two to three, four years, perhaps, maybe two years, maybe one year. And they use their likenesses and they capitalize them and they continue to use them and they never reimburse the players for it. And, and that's, that's not right. And, and Judge Magnuson in, in Minnesota said that you guys have a legitimate case to file a lawsuit. You know, we have standing in this conversation to go out and... and and, and establish a, a you know cause of action, and, and go to court with it, and uh, and we've we've somehow, you know, come up with this uh, disaster, and uh, it's all fringed on uh, lies, and manipulations, and pie in the sky and hope, you know, uh, there's a ten billion dollar industry, you know, and, and this fifty million dollars is is just a pittance towards that. It's a lot of money, fifty million dollars. We're not uh, we're not you know poo pooing that, but. Uh, uh, there's no guarantees whatsoever in this all that, that any player will receive any funds, not one penny, one dime. The interesting thing about the licensing uh, aspect, the group licensing aspect of this deal, is, is that's the main thing that they've been telling players that you've got to sign on for. You know, they're going to wind up paying uh, $42 million over eight years into this fund. That fund now disperses monies to charities that already exist. These aren't new charities specifically for us. These are charities that already exist doing other things. So that money is going to be funneled into that with the hopes 
that that money can come back to players, not in cash, but in goods and services, insurance, dental insurances, health uh, aids, uh, health health aid, uh, or, or those types of things. Uh, but what's not what's not in this is the specifics, the matrix of how that's to be done. Yeah, uh, we have a, a saying in the Marine Corps that's called "Hope is not a course of action." And uh, yes. if I was signing a legal legally binding document, I would want something that laid that out. Um, it seems to me uh, that between the ongoing uh, ties to uh, concussion and uh, uh, the concussions issue and the, the lawsuit against the NFL. Does the NFL have a, a serious problem about taking care of its former employees? Well, you're the second person today that's asked that question, and, and, uh, and I answer it in the affirmative. Uh, I think the National Football League has a big problem with uh, credibility to ex-players. Um, just for instance, take the, the, uh, the uh, concussion uh, aspect. What's very frustrating for these players is, and you know, however the lawsuit goes, that's how it goes. I can't comment on that. But what's very frustrating for people is, is to work for a, an, an entity like the National Football League, to spend a lot of time doing it, to establish a career, to get a good financial base, uh, and and to uh, and to have the the esteem and the and the pleasure to have been part of something in your youth. That is that is worthwhile, you know, and then at the same time to come back and say to them, you know, we got a problem. We want to talk to you about. It. And they say we don't even know who you are. Take a hike. They, and, and the frustration is is to be closed out, not to have a conversation. The frustration for these players for concussions and these players, I've had seven of them hospitalized five times with them, and so I, I understand the complaints. I understand that people are frustrated. I know players and Junior Seau and uh, Dave Duberson ki killed themselves specifically due to, uh, to this problem. Uh, and, and there is a direct problem uh, uh, from football to that symptom. And, uh, uh, and the National Football League is, is absolutely pretending it doesn't exist, and, and which brings on the lawsuit. And I, and I really hope they get traction with it. I hope they, they really bring this industry to its knees and, and to make them realize that, uh, th that, there is, that there is a conversation that has to be had. I know for a fact, you don't have to tell me, that, that football is, uh, is dangerous. You know, I've, I've had concussions as a kid in youth football, high school, junior college, college, professionally. I had a concussion, uh, you know, uh, uh, in an accident I was in several decades ago. I, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that is an ongoing possibility in life. You could walk out of this building and get hit in the head. And so, so a head trauma is a, is a very serious thing at, at every level. But... Um, uh, I, I didn't need anybody to say, "Hey, Fred, you're going to play football here. You know, you're going to get, you're going to get, and uh, you got there's a possibility of getting knocked out here and having having some problems." Well, I knew that. I, I I'm not angry at pro football to say you should have told me uh, that this was dangerous. I don't agree with that. You know, if, if, you, if you can't think for yourself to that degree, you're, you got a big problem. Sure. So, but but what I do uh, what I do believe is 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 accurate in this. You have to sue them to get the complete conversation and a, and a definition of it going forward. You have to do something for somebody now and, and going into the future. All right. Wow. Um, and I, I I think that that's completely understandable and agreeable. And uh, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off my glasses and we can. We can get back to uh, things that are that are not uh, the lawsuit. I do want to talk because, uh, unlike many players, you moved pretty seamlessly out of your out of your football career and into a very successful acting career. Uh, how did you go about that? <laughs> well, I, I I went into acting um, uh, when I was still playing for the Rams. Okay. From 1972, when I got back home, I'm from LA, so I I, I knew I knew what I wanted to do when I when I was. Uh, finished playing professional football, but I started doing that. I started going to acting class, started being interested in it, spent a lot of time in my off seasons doing, uh, um, you know, acting classes and uh, getting involved in it, trying to get myself emotionally uh, uh, separated from, from professional football. And uh, uh, so I was in class for five, six years before I left football. So when I the day I left, I just loaded my car up and I just hit the 405 freeway and went north, and I was on on my way to a new career, 
you know, a new interest anyway. You know, it's one thing to, to, to say you want to be an actor. It's another thing to be realistically look at it and say, gee, I can make a living at it. I didn't know if I could make a living at it or not, but it was an interest that I had and I followed it. Uh, you were, of course, Sergeant Rick Hunter on mm -hmm. TV's Hunter. Um, there we go. Yeah. Uh, just really flawless. Good Look at Stephanie. Look how good she is. She's Dee Dee McCall. Uh, she was fantastic as well. Were you? And uh, uh, 80s uh, TV dramas were, were often uh, centered around the, uh, the relationship between a male lead and, uh, and a female lead. Will they or won't they? That sort of thing. I would like, if, if you're feeling game, I would like to play a game called Hunter versus Other 80s Dramas. Are you, are you game for this? In what way? I, I am going to name a 1980s drama, and you just tell me how Hunter was superior to it. Because, and if you need some help, I can All right, I, go I ahead. We'll out. have fun with that. Let's go up. Uh, first up, uh, Heart to Heart. Ah, Robert Wagner. Yes. Uh, and uh, Stephanie Powers. Yes, they were terrific. They were absolutely terrific. Great combination. Uh, I thought that the, the combination between Stephanie Kramer and myself matched that. But I also think we had them when it came to action. Nobody could throw a guy off a building like me. I would agree with that. Uh, and I don't want to challenge you on that front. I would say that Heart to Heart has a slight edge in the opening credits. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tuxedos and, uh, and, uh, and, and like power boats going around. But uh, not a lot of realism. I don't expect uh, you know, wealthy millionaires to be solving crime. Yeah, it's it, nice when they do. Yeah, that, it, it's a fantasy. Uh, we had uh, we had people flying off of buildings in car chases, and uh, our openings were more spectacular. There is a car explosion in the uh, in the Hunter uh, opening credits. Yep, I and the, that. a spinning car. Yes, yes, you know that one. Um, also, uh, uh, Stephanie in a bathtub. Stephanie in a bathtub. Yeah, that's a, that's something that, that I appreciated. Uh, Hill Street Blues this is a tough one. Well, Hill Street, Hill Street Blues was a was one of the first uh, uh, serious police dramas. Yes, uh, you know, uh, um, there was no laughter, no joke telling. Was everybody was heavy. serious? It everybody was. was serious all the time. And the interesting thing was, as an actor, you, you take a look at the actors that moved through there. All of them were playing the same thing. Huh. Uh, I would also say, created by Stephen Bochco, who's responsible for Cop Rock. Edge Hunter. How about that? Yeah. Uh, Miami Vice. Yeah. Don Johnson. Uh, great show. I read for that. Really? I passed Don in the hall, actually. Uh, seeing as how they went with Don Johnson, apparently you were too masculine for the role. Well, I was also too tall. Oh. They had initially had the guy in a boat with an alligator, if you recall. Uh, I do not. He lived on a boat. Yes. And had a pet alligator yes, named did. Elvis. Yes, he did. That's right. Well, that was just a pilot, so that was just... The pilot was excellent, it though. Was, it was a very good pilot, but... Phil, uh, Phil Collins is in the air tonight. Yep. And uh, it's a terrific show. A very, uh, it, it never never made it into syndication successfully. It's in syndication, but it never did the numbers that uh, Hunter did. Hunter is one of the best all-time shows in syndication. Really? Globally. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, another show that does well in syndication, Magnum P.I. Very good show. Yeah, excellent show. Uh, they have the edge on us in terms of uh, shorts and, and the beach aspect of everything and a Ferrari. Tom Selleck's mustache is and tough. His mustache. And, no female uh, lead, though. No, didn't need one because if you had a female lead, it would be, very impo it would be impossible to put uh, Tom with any women in the uh, show. Rotating crew of bikinis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's go with the legal drama, L.A. Law. L.A. Law, a, a, a nice co uh, uh, court drama. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, hallway sex, no action, and boring. Yeah, also they wrote a character off once uh, just by having her fall down an elevator shaft. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Fortunately, not in our building. We're in the elevators all day long. Uh, how, about, how about Dallas? Dallas, great show. I watched Dallas. I used to watch it Sunday nights, uh, Saturday nights uh, when we were in the hotels before games on the road. You got bad news. You wasted a year of your life because there was an entire season that was just a dream. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that's how they, that's how they got around bringing the guy back. Yeah, you know? Edge Hunter. Um, how about, uh, let's, go with, let's go with Dynasty. Dynasty, another show that was a, a Dallas uh, a split off. Yeah. And uh, the same, I think the same criticism. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of pathos and a lot of angst uh, and, and boring. Also, there were a couple seasons that did not have Joan Collins. 
Fortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do let's do one more. All Scarecrow right. and Mrs. King. I didn't. It, it didn't last very long. No, it didn't. Uh, because they had zero sex appeal compared to Hunter. No, it didn't, there, there wasn't. Any, there was no uh, spinning cars or punch outs or chases on the beach. No, absolutely not. Uh, I'm gonna let. Uh, let's go to. Um, uh, we're gonna close the show pretty soon, and uh, I'm gonna take. I want to go to the troll bag. This is. Uh, these are questions from readers. Mm-hmm. Um, first up is from uh, Chef Billy. This this guy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, writes for an LSU Tigers blog called Anne the Valley Shook. And he oh, says, no. seven-year-old me has so many thoughts about Stephanie Kramer, including how the hell you pronounce her first name. Because there's the P and the F. Yeah. It's, did you ever call her Step Fanny? We always call, that's all we called her, Step Fanny. <laughs> that's all we did, really. Did that bother her? Did she insist no, on being Stephanie? No, or? she was great. You couldn't bother. You couldn't rattle her. She was really great. Is it technically Stephanie? For the record, it's Stephanie. You pronounce it Stephanie. Yeah, but but Stephanie, Step Fanny. I, I it's I can see the. Confusion. I don't know what I don't know if it's an if it's a false affectation of. It's possible that her parents know. were just really poor spellers, or couldn't decide between. I don't know. I think it's a creative choice. Really, I don't know. Oh, I guess if her name is is Stephanie Kramer, there's probably a lot of Stephanie Kramers in L.A. Yeah. Okay, I could see that. And then one more question. Uh, Mike Jones uh, says, "How many guns does he have?" Who did he like playing against? Who was a dirty player? Did he ever play basketball? That's a lot of questions. Let's just go with how many guns do you have? I've got 23 really? firearms. What's, uh, what's your largest handgun? Because you have gigantic hands. I have a, uh, a six-inch-barreled bar- six three fifty seven Magnum. Oh. <laughs> and I also have a forty four Magnum. I have the Dirty Harry gun. Nice. I could see you... Uh, I can see you doing it. I, I've, I fired 9 mil. I'm not good with a 9 mil. And I've got, I've got dainty, girlish hands. Um, yeah, you, you really need a pocket knife. I, <laughs> I could at least have uh, a, a small gauge pistol. Uh, no, that, that's, uh, I could see you doing the Dirty Harry. That, that, that works well. Step Fanny's uh, purse pistol would be fine for you. Thank you. I, I think that I could rock the purse pistol. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's, let's move on from my dainty hands. Uh, I want to I want to close the show with uh, with Fumbler. This is where we focus on the internet side of things. And as we were talking before the show, um, uh, this was by the way, viewers, this is amazing. I I introduced Fred Dreyer to Frisky Dingo. He had never heard of it before. Uh, Frisky Dingo is a show that was aired late at nights on uh, Adult Swim Cartoon Network, uh-huh. and uh, it featured uh, the billionaire playboy Xander Cruz. Uh, fighting crime and uh and at one point he he runs for president and uh tries to get his secretary to track down fred dreyer who he knows as a two-time pro bowler but uh but not as tv's hunter um and we have a we have a little clip it's different than the one that i showed you before oh actually where are we on fred dreyer Fred Dreyer? Yes, Fred Dreyer. Oh, no. What? I've been calling for Fred Hunter. Yeah. You know what I think happened? You got him mixed I up? I think I got him mixed yeah, up. Yeah, because he's Hunter and you got him mixed up. Yeah. God, you know. Look, I have a mnemonic device. What? Just hang up. Fred Dreyer is hunting. Who's the guy with the gray hair? Who's Say, the guy in the left? Just get him on the phone. <laughs> it's McCall. like Wolf and Grimley. <laughs> 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 Duty McCall, um, and so if you ever if you ever wonder why uh, when people say Fred Dreyer TV's Hunter, that's because of Frisky Dingo. Well, and it's great because uh, you know as as an athlete you die many deaths as an athlete. I and, sure you know sure when your when your athletic career is over you die, but I've been uh, resurrected and now I'm being perpetuated. By Frisky Dingo, I appreciate it. I uh, it's it's a brilliant show. Uh, it went off the air too soon, and now we uh, we get by. It's off the air now. It it lasted two seasons, but the creative team behind it uh, makes the very successful Archer on the FX network. Um, very it, good. So uh, do check it out sometime. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. Fred, that's that's all we've got for you. Thanks all so right. much. That's enough, this is, isn't it? This this is this has been more than enough. This has made my day, my week, even my month. Uh, we've been on hiatus. This is the best possible way for us to come back. Oh, great, good. Uh, folks, tune in next week. We're going to be changing the show up a little bit. It's going to be a lot of fun. Fred Dreyer, TV's Hunter. Thank you for being with us. Thank today. you so much. Good to see you. you Thank too. you very much. <laughs>